Standing up in McKinney, this is According to Callus, coming to you with episode 405. Yes, it is April the 27th. It is a Thursday, and you know, every once in a while I'll call it a theological Thursday, right? Or a testify Tuesday or something like that. I don't have anything funny like that. I'm going to go with, where's the revolution? That's today's title, but before we get into the subject at hand, let me remind you, you can do me a favor. You can help me help you like, share, subscribe to this podcast. Visit me on the social media with at according to Callis. I'm at Gab. I'm at Facebook. And occasionally I even hit MeWe and I have a telegram channel according to Callis. Hey, the algorithm is a funny thing. But we got to do what we got to do to get there. And if you're feeling particularly enthusiastic about any of the content that I've been putting out, do me a favor, rate and review this show. All right, on with the program. So I've got some things on my chest that I need to confess. (laughs) Yes, so at times... Um, I even get tired listening to podcasts. Now, I was a talk radio junkie for years. I mean, going back to like probably 1997, the Clarence Thomas uh, hearings when Rush Limbaugh burst onto the scene. And I know I've referenced this before. I bring this to you because even I can only listen to so much talk. So I've pivoted away from the talk radio. Uh, Occasionally, I'll listen to Glenn Beck for, you know, 20, 30 minutes in the morning. Uh, we used to have a couple of decent uh, local shows uh, that I would listen to in the morning. Uh, JP, Kathy, and the crew was pretty good when I could get it on, uh, I think it was 1160, might have been 1190. Uh, I think they'd still do a podcast. Um, but when it was on in the morning, I'd get in the truck and it's warming up and I'm getting ready to go in the morning. It was refreshing to put on something local, something that was talking about what was going on out my backyard. We really don't have any local radio, so to speak. And I, and I know we've got one or two local hosts and they do a decent job. But if all I wanted to listen to is the latest nonsense out of Dallas or worse yet, the latest nonsense out of DC as filtered through Dallas, I could put on the local news. And I don't mean that as a slight because we do have several actually quite decent talk radio hosts that were on the air here for quite some time. Uh, a couple are retired. Uh, at least one is still on the air, but I just can't listen to it anymore. And the other guy, uh, John David Wells, is, I guess, spending all of his time down at the border trying to defend Texas. And kudos to him. I mean, the guy basically hung up his uh, radio host duties to go do that. He felt morally compelled to do it. That's not an easy uh, task to give up a career to do things like that. So... Today, I'm uh, at work, driving around uh, from stop to stop, and I just, I called the timeout. I've been listening to all my shows, I'm pretty much caught up, and I'm just like, you know, I have to, I have to put some music on, I have to just take a mental break, because I gotta be honest, even I get tired of politics, (laughs) even I get tired of the latest outrage, the latest... mm, triumph or failure. I mean, I can only listen to so many views on why Tucker Carlson's not at Fox News anymore. To be honest, I think I've watched a grand total of two hours worth of Tucker's show in the, I don't know, eight years or whatever he's been on the air. (laughs) That's not a slight at Tucker because I haven't watched any news TV news. I haven't watched any of it since probably 2012. I mean, back in the back in the old days, right? I would I would enjoy putting on Hannity and Combs. How many of you remember that show? I mean, Hannity was a Mike Hog. He's still a Mike Hog, but Combs actually pushed back and you know had some good banter and good discussions. It was a Really good show. And when Combs went away, it was never the same. I mean, and even Bill O'Reilly, he got tedious. I think he's doing uh, radio spots now. And honestly, 
that's probably what's best. I mean, 15 minutes of Bill O'Reilly is really, really good. An hour, well, that's a bit too much, in my opinion. Especially after years of listening to him and watching him. I got to admit, I was a big fan of Bill O'Reilly for quite some time. You know, and it, here's the thing. I'm not looking to watch or listen to somebody that agrees with me 100%. I just want somebody that's going to be honest. This is what happened. This is what I think about. Or this is how I would describe the events that occurred. What do you think about it? Or this is what X said and this is what Y said. This is kind of what I'm thinking based upon their testimonies. Hey, it's called honesty. I know that's a challenge. And, you know, they can trot out the idea of nonpartisan. There's really no such thing. We all know this by now, right? Everything's partisan. Everything's political. Which is why even I get tired of it. I have to take a break. Check out mentally. I don't want to think about this stuff anymore. So I go back to my uh, trusty um, Spotify list with uh, rock and roll tunes. <laughs> you know, I'm a child of the 80s. What can I say? I, I go back to what I know. And what's very interesting is I actually like a lot of the boomer music, even though um, it some of it aged well, some of it did not. But, I mean, it's it's hard to get upset if, the Rolling Stones comes on, or The Who. And I mean, they, they each have about five or six songs that I really enjoy. The rest, eh, whatever. And then you've got your 80s bands, which is kind of what I grew up with. Interestingly enough, I wasn't really allowed to listen to any of that rock and roll music because, you know, it was going to be morally corrupting and take my soul away. <laughs> I'm exaggerating a little bit. But interesting part of that is... <laughs> You know, I, I, so I learned firsthand that sheltering children doesn't always have the outcome that you would like. I was that child. I, I, I tried to do a better job with my daughters. I, I'm not sure uh, that they would agree 100% or not, but we tried to be careful what we exposed them to. And we gradually loosened the restrictions because as they became older and they began to understand things more and they had this thing called perception right and they could see what was going on and not be deceived right and as they built up their logic their reason then they could determine what was appropriate what was real and what was fake what was a fairy tale what was you know, fiction versus nonfiction. And I'm actually pretty happy with the outcome with both of my daughters. They have a very firm grasp on reality. So <clears throat> that being said, I, I'm using this to bridge into where I'm going. So a few years ago, or actually probably a little over a year ago at this point, I stumbled upon a tune called Where's the Revolution? Now, I haven't really listened to it because Depeche Mode was really not my scene back in the 80s. Not to say that I didn't like some of their songs or it wasn't uh, entertaining, maybe titillating, definitely annoying, and definitely poked <laughs> some of the right people, right? Oh, you're listening to that Depeche Mode stuff. What's wrong with you? And and some of the parents would shriek. I mean, <laughs> blasphemous rumors and personal Jesus. <laughs> Man, you want to upset some... Uh, Old cranks, <laughs> listen, just say the titles of those songs. Now, to be honest, if you've been uh, paying attention, I actually quoted a line from one of those songs earlier. The idea is, though, as an adult, you go back and you review some of these uh, things that you used to listen to all the time, or maybe you listen to now, or it's just a... I don't want to say comedic, but relaxing detour from all that is stressful during your day. So where's the revolution comes on. And, and I kind of like this song because I've tried to listen to the words when I'm driving down the road, thinking about where I'm going. And so let me just read some of the lines here. And the reason why I want you to follow along here for just a second is to consider the implications of what the guy is questioning. Now this song I believe it was written in 2017. One would speculate it was a uh, response to Trump winning the election. 
The irony, and the bitter irony is, it probably should have come out in 2001 or early 2002. And if you want to be gracious, perhaps, uh, you know, 2008, 2009 would have been more appropriate. So here we go. You've been kept down. You've been pushed around. You've been lied to. You've been fed truths. Who's making your decisions? You or your religion? Your government? Your countries? You patriotic junkies? Where's the revolution? You're letting me down. Yeah, you know, I can't I can't do the <laughs> voice much as... But the whole idea is, is saying you don't think for yourself... And you, and you tolerate it. Goes on to say, you've been pissed on for too long. Your rights abused, your views refused. They manipulate and threaten with terror as a weapon. Scare you till you're stupefied. Wear you down until you're on their side. Where's the revolution? Interesting. Now, I don't know what the political affiliations are of the guys that are in the Pesh mode. But if I could take a wild guess, they're left of center. And while I would like to be sympathetic and like to say that even they are tired of the system that we live in, even they understand that this isn't uh, playing out the way they had hoped, right? I, I know there was a lot of young lefties back when I was a young man. There was a lot of young lefties that really thought that the left, the progressives wanted freedom. They wanted liberty. And I'm hoping they're acknowledging the bitter irony and swallowed that pill and moved on in life to see that's not coming. But as I but as I pay attention to the lyrics and I and I look at it and I'm thinking to myself the whole time, do they realize that the very thing they're warning against, the very thing that they're telling you is a bad idea, is happening right here, right now? And actually it's arguably been going on for quite some time, regardless of which side of the dichotomy is in the White House, the Congress continuously moves further and further in the progressive way. More and more liberty gets stripped away. More and more freedom gets ignored. The boot presses more and more on your head and on your neck. I think of Derek Chauvin, right? Here's this guy that is doing a legal hold on a guy who is overdosing on fentanyl and he's looking at you like, okay, I'm not stressed out. I'm the guy's, you know, flaking out, but I got my knee on the shoulders. He can't go anywhere, but now he's going to go spend life in prison because somebody put a picture up that made it look like he was leaning directly on his neck and he killed him. Doesn't matter if it's true or not. No, because he went to a jury and the jury bought whatever they were told. Uh, perhaps because they've been scared till they're stupefied. And they've been worn down and now they're on their side. See, when you when you run with the BLM, right? When you run with the Antifa guys and you literally scare the heck out of normal people, middle of the road people, people that aren't overly excited about anything political or period. They just want to be able to go about their lives, do their jobs, take care of their family, spend time with their kids or their wives or vice versa, their husbands. And just kind of enjoy what peace they can have. And then because they're not paying attention, because they are detached, they just go along to get along. They ignore the fact they've been abused. They're not allowed to have their own views. They've been worn down. Now they're on their side, right? So there really is not a lot of hope for any active pushback. That's why there's no revolution. And it talks about the train is coming. I can only assume that's a reference to the Nazis. You know, everybody's favorite whipping boy. And, and to be honest, with good reason. But let's face it, the communists killed far more people than the National Socialists ever did. Not for lack of trying, mind you. But the Soviets, the communists, were just much better organized. And there were so many more of them. And they had so much more time. So the iron... The irony beyond that is the song's out talking about where's the revolution? Why, why aren't people fighting back? Why aren't they pushing back? Well, push back against what? Everything that's going on, everything that's happening is going the same direction. It's always pushing to the progressive, 
to the most extreme, crazy, leftist, liberal, whatever, whatever pejorative term you want to use, they're, they're stripping out all morality, all normal Western culture and replacing it with the outcome of the French Revolution or the Russian Revolution. That's what lets me down. But on further review here, there's something else to consider. The guy's calling for the revolution, right? He wants to know where it's at. Why hasn't it happened? My response is, do you really want that? You know, there's a whole lot of, well, we'll just call them middle class white guys, right? Out in the hinterlands, a good number of them are former military or perhaps hunters or outdoorsmen. Do you really want those guys pushing back? Do you really want those guys to decide enough's enough? We're going to do something about it. I'm fairly certain the guys that wrote this song don't want that. See, having grown up in the Midwest, having resided now in Texas, having spent some time in the Navy with a whole bunch of people from all over this country, I can assure you that the vast majority of us that are not on the coast, that are not living in the big cities, We don't care for any of that. We don't care that what you want to do with yourself. We don't care what you and your significant other want to do with yourself. But when you start making me accept it, when you start making me applaud it, when you start making me pay for it, when you start making my child have to be indoctrinated with it, yeah, now you cross the line. Now you, now you got a problem. Do you really want that revolution? Do you really want for those people to get up and do something about it? You can say what you want about the Europeans being soft and weak as they're theoretically being overrun by the Muslim hordes. But I got to tell you, the better part of them vacated that continent a century ago. See, we have a whole lot of Irish in this country, a whole lot of Germans. Now, the Germans are better at following rules than most, right? I mean, at least that's the stereotype, and there's always some truth in stereotypes. But what happens when you get them mad? What happens when you push them into a corner? Well, I mean, the British, or I'm sorry, the English could tell you what happens when they have to deal with the Irish for an extended period of time. And half of Europe can tell you what happens when you get those krauts angry. And then you throw in the fact that There's a whole lot of other Europeans all across this country. They would just soon be left alone. They want to go about their life. And I got to tell you, a good number of them identify themselves as good middle-of-the-road Democrat, moderate, maybe even Republican moderates, because they don't care. They're not fully vested in anything. They just want to be left alone. They hear the term F-A-F-O, and they kind of chuckle and try and blow it off. They don't want to think about it. They know what it means, but they don't want to go there. They they want to they want to be able to go to their church on Sunday, get a nice platitude laden filled message, go home, watch their football game, get up, go to work on Monday, maybe maybe take the kids to a church on Wednesday night, or maybe uh, the football game on Friday night, or soccer game on Saturday morning. They just want to be able to live their lives without being pushed around, dumped on, treated like garbage, like strangers in their own land. Yet that's what's happening right here and right now. So when you ask, where's the revolution? My question is, do you really want that? Perhaps you're playing with fire. You you really ought to consider that. I mean, if, if you're a fan <clears throat> of leftist policies, right? You're a good progressive. You got to ask yourself, do you really want that pushback? Do you really want a counteroffensive? Do you want to consider what a bunch of guys who've lost it all are capable of doing? Is that really what you think is a good idea? And, you know, now we have this floated idea, right, of a national divorce. 
hey, you know what? That's fine. You guys want to do that out in California or New York or New Jersey or Massachusetts, Connecticut, Vermont, whatever. You guys go do your own thing. We're going to go over here. We're going to do our thing. I mean, it's been tried once before, but the Yankees wouldn't go for it. And they were successful the first time, right? Military dictatorship, passed some different laws under duress, and then claim it's the new law of the land. It doesn't matter because, you know what? Most of these people, they just want to go back to their lives. What do I need to do to get you to quit messing with me? How Can I, can I just get back to what I'm doing? I want to spend time with my family. I want, I want to enjoy my community, go to my church, go to the bowling league, whatever. I just don't want to deal with your garbage anymore. What do I have to give you to go away? Now, I'm going to suggest to you that perhaps this was not the best choice on our part. Perhaps we should have pushed back and made a stand much quicker. But I'm here to tell you, it's not going to stop. You can't buy peace any longer. They're not going to accept what they have. And the real sad thing is, is I've tried to be the peacemaker. I've tried to go along to get along. I've tried not to fight over things that just don't matter. And there are a whole lot of things that just don't matter. You know, we need to work with the coalition. We need to do this. We need to fight the good legal fight. We need to do the right thing all the time. But if we go to revolution, if we really were to adopt this viewpoint, this idea, I don't want to consider that. I don't think that's what really anybody wants. Oh, I know a few young guys that, you know, they're full of piss and vinegar and they think they're <clears throat> going to win the war on their own. Uh, yeah, I'm here to tell you in 30 seconds, I, I can describe to you why that won't work. See, because if I am the uh, general, right? If I'm, if I'm the leader of the opposition, how, whichever way you want to look at this, mind you, whether you're a loyalist or a patriot, doesn't matter. I mean, the guy that they bring in from Red Dawn says you don't worry about you don't worry about the those chickens right you 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 don't go kill the goat because or whatever because the coyote stole the chickens no you go kill the coyote <laughs> right and i'm paraphrasing that because i don't remember but <clears throat> the idea is you don't punish people that had nothing to do with it but i'll tell you what here's something to consider this is a this is a very uh, variation of what Solzhenitsyn, Solzhenitsyn, ah, whatever, the Russian dissident said. That while they were sitting in their prison cells, they wondered and they schemed to themselves what it would have been like if those people that went out to go do the work of the Soviets had to worry about whether or not they were going to go home at night, whether or not they could call it a night. The modern variation is. Yeah, soldier, you may come kill some of my friends. You may be successful, but what are you going to do when we track down your family? Oh, that's not within the rules of war, you say? Yeah, there are no rules in war. Haven't you been paying attention? I mean, it's just that simple. That simple. If there's no rules... <laughs> Yet, here we are. We've got <clears throat> April the 27th. People from January 6th of 2021 are sitting in lockup and nobody's done a darn thing about it. Not our so called champions and heroes in Congress, not any of the governors that are supposed to be the good guys. DeSantis and Abbott are silent. They've done nothing. Christy Nome's done nothing. There's a pretty good chance that at least one of those people sitting in that prison has not gotten any representation, has not gotten bail. Those are their people. I'm willing to bet there's at least one person there from each of those states. Where is their governor advocating for them? Why isn't the attorney general not there saying, release my people? We tolerate it. We keep tolerating it. And they keep praying 
the leftists, the progressives, they keep praying that they won't cross the line too soon until they're ready. We just box them in a little bit more. We take a little bit more. We take a little bit more. They're not going to be effectively able to fight. Under normal circumstances, they would be right. You make it exceedingly difficult. You, you sap their strength in their desire to fight. But if you go too far, well, now the gloves have come off. Now you got to be really careful what you wish for. So when you call for that revolution, consider that first. You know, I've said many, many times, I'm tired of listening to people bluster and say how, what bad guys, tough guys they are and how they're going to go stand up and do this and do that. I imagine that from time to time, people maybe think I fall into that category. Yeah, but I don't talk about facing down federal whatever. I don't talk about, you know, telling off cops or any of that stuff. No. I mean, when they're wrong, they're wrong. When they're right, they're right. And there's somebody for everything. Me personally, I just call it like I see it. I go stand when I feel it's important to stand for something. And otherwise, I try and color within the lines. Try and fight the fights the way they're designed and make the most of what I have. But if you take that away, if you strip that away, if you if you take away the veneer of civilization, what do you have? I won't have the option to shut up anymore. I'm going to have to put up. And it's not just me. There's literally millions of me. So again, I ask you, when you call for the revolution, do you really know what you're asking for? Now, everything, everything that the guy says in this song can be absolutely true from both sides of the dichotomy. But when he talks about the train coming to get on board and he can hear the engines running, to me, that just echoes the doom, right? The outcome. That's not good. In the least. So I ask you, I beg you to consider getting involved now. Do something now. Hold the line now so we don't have to experience that revolution. All this build up, all this talk, and here I am reminding you, it's better to win without a fight. It's better to walk away while you still can. It's better to not Cross a line you can never, ever get back from. I want you to consider that. The next time somebody gets so bent out of shape and declares it's the end of the world because some tranny man is on the beer can, who cares? Don't buy it. Don't beat your chest. Don't cry. Who cares? We've heard for 30 years how empowered women are. Okay. Women, stand up. It's your job. You wanted it. Oh, wait, some guy's beating you? Well, whose fault is that? You allowed it. You tolerated it. If none of those NCAA women would show up and compete, the frauds can't compete against anybody because you all just said, no, we're not going to do it. That's how easy it is. Don't be afraid. You have the high ground. We have the high ground. We just need to act like it. Make the difference now before we have a revolution. And with that, this has been According to Callus, and I will see you on the other side.